revived it. And Cecil is still kicking, so yeah. we'll see if he wants some more water and stuff. Yeah. Oh, I should show you what I made today. Waffle pizza. Awesome, thank you. So, I don't know what you're going to talk about today. Well, I, I think I'll finish up on that thing, Ideas by Nella Ayad. Not the thing they had last night that was uh, semi-interesting. They actually had talking about a liberal last night <laughs> and giving them a uh, liberal some sort of a, uh, positive play. I just woke him up. Oh, okay, that's why he seems a little bit... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, you never know, right? You never know. Maybe I won't give him any more right now. He seems to be having seems, trouble. Seems to be too tough for a baby right now. Let me just put him inside my, my shirt. Anyway, you go ahead and talk. How's your pizza? Oh, it's good. I'm not worried about it. Not chatty and stuff this morning. How's it going? Is it tough? Tough morning for baby? I know. You get really attached to these little guys. They're so sweet. I've been taken to cuddling him. I think maybe we should keep him mm. in the spare room upstairs. Mm. Really warm. Well, we wouldn't be able to get the keep the window open. Okay. You can't grab a draft. See, downstairs he has constant temperature. Okay. It's not really cool down there. It's no, I guess not. I don't know. Or I could just sleep with him and hope for the best. I don't really move while I'm sleeping. But yeah, little buddy definitely isn't a downy woodpecker. Because he doesn't have the white chest. Yeah. I figure he might be a northern flicker, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure. I don't know. Saw a northern flicker last night on the tree that he, I figured he fell out. Mm -hmm. It was just like maybe six feet away from where he, uh, the trunk was, from where he was being assailed by the crows. Oh, poor little buddy. Poor buddy. Yeah. Might be the last time He's on TV. He's on our deck dinner, our deck breakfast. Yeah. Ordinarily, he's much more vigorous when he wakes up. Yeah, he wants some food. Or this water. Morning, he doesn't want. Yeah, it's a bad sign. Not a good sign. I feel like getting up and pacing. Yeah. I know. No. Um, Poor little sucker. Anyway, now I. So the night before, ideas. She'd been to Cairo, and 
at uh, the Tahrir Square, uh, Freedom, still called Freedom Square. And uh, she was reminiscing with uh, three people. I think one of them had been there marching from a mosque. And, okay, mm, well. We don't march from a mosque to uh, get freedom. To get freedom. Yeah. We you don't go march there from a, 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 a <laughs> Catholic church to get freedom. You don't march from a from a. Nazi or a, a communist meeting. monument or meeting or whatever to get freedom. Yep. You don't march from the Mormon temple to get freedom. So I'm covering a lot of bases. You don't march from a Hindu temple to get freedom. Because he has those little woodpecker claws, and he mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. really hangs on to things. So I can stick them like a little Velcro toy onto yeah. my clothes, onto my trunk. And he'll just stay there. Yeah, maybe the infection. Maybe there infection. Were, yeah, there were a lot them. of wounds on him. Mm -hmm. The magpies were really hammering him. Uh, you know crows, when yeah. or crows? Yeah. yeah. You didn't see it. So. No. I just saw they were around him when oh, yeah, he drove you did by. See it. Yeah, exactly. Right. And pecking him. Yeah. But I I didn't see like James had noticed they were throwing him up into the air like a doll. One of them did. It was like a rag doll except he was kinda of stiff like cardboard. I thought he was gone then. Man. So she has three people representing this revolution. Now, my reaction when uh, I saw it on TV, I was dying from multiple myeloma. I didn't know what I had. I could barely walk around. I was trying to walk around without triggering a back spasm. I ended up with five fractured vertebrae, compression fractures. I was more depressed about what I was hearing couldn't really see it on TV. I was walking around the house trying to exercise because I was basically laid up. I'd get up and walk and uh, I saw hardly any images of it. But I was just trying to make sure I didn't fall down because I, the back spasms I was having tended to pitch me backwards and uh, it only happened once. I was very careful that I pitched over. I don't think it caused any long-term damage, but I'm listening to this. I'm more depressed about what was happening with the so-called Arab Spring. All these stupid Fogoshes were so enthused, and people who were being fooled by the Fogoshes. Wow, this is going to bring democracy to the Middle East. Wow. You guys are stupid as George Bush Jr. thinking he was going to bring democracy into the Middle East and as stupid I'm not exaggerating but thinking he would bring democracy into the Middle East via Iraq you guys are stupid as George Bush I'm Dick Cheney and Donald Rumsfeld stupid all you guys well I don't know Rumsfeld was making a lot of money off the deal well, Cheney was too, but they really thought, hey, you know. Did they really think, or did they really think, we're going to make a lot of money off this? They really thought. They thought they were going to save money, like uh, 
they've got plenty of other ways of making money, you know. Rumsfeld eventually lost his job and stuff like that. He's still alive, he's still making money somewhere. You know, there, there are less uh, dangerous places to make money in the world today for scumbugs like that. So, uh, I'm watching, and I'm saying Napoleon. This isn't the Arab Spring. This is the Arab Fall. And it's going to be followed by the Arab Winter. I knew it would be expropriated, the so-called revolution, as it was in Iran, by religious fundamentalists, Muslim fundamentalists. I knew. And of course, I was right. The reason There's a reason why I read books, and there's a reason why people should read books. They don't read fiction to find out things. Are you hearing that, you Fogosius and people that are impressed with Fogosius? Fiction is fiction. People make stuff up for fiction. There's a lot of fiction purported fact, but you'd better be reading Sorry, some, little buddy, stuff. Sorry. some stuff that, about reality, where that's trying to get towards some sort of reality. I just didn't want you to have to hang on so hard to yourself. Anyway, now the Ayad, or whatever her name is, I haven't seen it written, so I can't do a more close approximation of what her name is. She's got these three guests. You think that she'd have people that kind of gave a spectrum of opinion of the people that were there at Freedom Square trying to bring on a revolution for those 13 days. They all, like her, swing from the left side of the fence. From what I can tell. So there's a journalist, a novelist, presumably an essay writer, and an, an academic. So one of them is talking about his comrades and friends who are involved. And he bothers to use the word comrade again. He used it at least twice. What did he mean by comrade? His friends, he seemed to say, were the ones who weren't, what was the term? Indoctrinated or whatever. Comrades, uh-uh. It's like when Nelson Mandela calls Winnie his wife every time he mentions her. Former wife. No, at that point in time, still her wife. His wife. In his autobiography, Long Walk to Freedom, it should have been called The Long March to Freedom, with reference to Mao Zedong's Long March, or The Long Goose Step to Freedom. Because he was using terrorism. He was the The, you know, like the IRA, for example, has a military wing and a, something like a civilian wing or a political wing. Mandela represented the civilian or political wing. Eventually, uh, initially, he was the, he uh, came up, he developed the spear of the party. You know, I can't see Mohammed Gandhi, you know, Mohammed, Mahatma Gandhi developing the spear of my movement, you know, <laughs> wow, I mean, he just gives it away, but yeah, he's calling all his uh, buddies comrade, yeah, okay, yeah, you know, truth in advertising there, folks, the ANC was communist, even worse. Communists combined with Nazi, right? Your national, pan Arab nationals. Their biggest disappointment was when the Soviet Union went down. Now all of a sudden, 
we had no international cronies to protect them. So they actually had to have something like a pretense of democracy. Something that was less, uh, less of a pretense than would have obtained if the, if the communist citadel of Russia hadn't fallen. Anyway, now I've got these flunkies there. And I have to be, I'm listening. No, I missed the first 15 minutes. Maybe she explained really carefully what these flunkies believed in. But, you know, it's all about the revolution, the action, not about what these guys were revolting for. What did they believe in? One of them talked at the end about how democracy has its failings, its weaknesses. I'm going, yeah, yeah, I've heard this stuff from you idiot faux gauches, you know? Uh, you faux gauches out there, I know you. I've hung with you guys too long. I've read too much of, of your stuff. Sociological, anthropological, so-called sociological. It's really anti-sociological. Anthropological. It's not, that's a misnomer. You do not study humankind, nor is it a study. It's just whatever problem you throw up against the wall. And you hope some of it sticks. Fictional pattern. So the key thing is, what were they revolting for? See, they had something like free elections in Egypt after the so-called revolution. Now the whole thing is, you don't have a revolution where people die. Not many people died. Some did. Some were put in prison, tortured. And uh, what was the vote? 72% for the forces of democracy. And Mohammed Morsi represents, no, no. Mohammed Morsi, whatever his first name was, Morsi, uh, represented the Muslim Brotherhood. Oh, you know. So he and his fellow fundamentalists garnered, as I recall, 72% of the vote. Now, I'll put you back in there in a minute. Some I'll of the you people. To have some water. Voted for uh, the party of Mubarak. Don't grab that. That looks a little bit better. Looks a little better. I don't know. He feels pretty cold. Yeah. I shouldn't have left him in there. I just didn't want to roll on him. I yeah, sleep I know. in there. I know. You, you, it's best to do what you can do. You feel really bad if you roll on. So. So seventy-two percent. So that means the revolutionaries who basically would have been Marxists and commies and anarchists and all sorts of stuff had to share 28% of the vote with uh, the supporters ultimately of uh, the, the party of uh, what they say is the military which would be um, people who would have supported Mubarak and then eventually Sisi when the counter-revolution occurred with the leader of the counter-revolution which happened about three years later something like that. so this stupid revolutionary author says oh you know like the Muslim Brotherhood was only as quarter as bad as uh, Mubarak mm, yeah you know, like they were uh, 
they were cooking the frog slowly. The Muslim Brotherhood is a terrorist organization. Uh, I think the United States has got that right when they've classified them as such. I believe the United States has. So they, uh, they def definitely believe in state terrorism. They believe in uh, the various uh, um, penalties of uh, Sharia law and uh, stuff like that. They are fundamentalists and uh, you know, you, you look at the various wings, like Hamas, Hamas is just definitely a terrorist organization. So these guys will uh, support terrorism if, if indeed they're not willing to do it them, themselves. And uh, Mohammed Morsi people were going, wow, well, this is great. Uh, this He's going to bring freedom. And then all of a sudden they're going... Well, not so all of a sudden, because they're dull dimwits, uh, the stupid uh, faux gauches, and the people that get fooled by them. Uh, you get fooled by fools, that's pretty sad. So, uh, yeah, you know, hey, what's wrong? He's, he's not behaving like a, a democratic leader. What's wrong? Yeah, he was trying to cook the frog slowly. He wasn't as, as smart about it as er Erdogan in uh, Turkey. Turkey's doing the same thing, you know, and people are going, you know, like initially when he gets elected, now we'll really see how enlightened Muslim fundamentalism is. <laughs> what? You, you stupid. Read the stuff the guys believe in. You don't. I know people who refuse to read the Quran. It's all there. It's inspired for the fundamentalists. And that's the vast majority of Muslims in the world. It's inspired, and Muhammad is the person that you're supposed to follow. He's supposed to be the perfect exemplar of the person you're supposed to follow. Look at the stuff that he did. Look at the stuff that he said to do. That stuff is still operational. I believe when you're dealing with uh, what happened in the past, letting bygones be bygones. But if the people who believe in a certain thing don't believe in letting bygones be bygones. In other words, still believe in behaving the way someone behaved 1,400 years ago. That, you know, like that's not going to wash with me. Then you can't let bygones be bygones. You look at the way the guy behaved. You look at what he said to do and uh, stuff like that. And the law that's based on it, Sharia law. And it's unacceptable. Taken in total. There'd be parts of it that Sharia law will tell people, you know, you got to worship five uh, times a day. And, uh, okay, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that, so on and so forth. But uh, there are certain parts of it that are absolutely unacceptable. And they would have been unacceptable back then, and they're particularly unacceptable now. So... There you go, 72%. That's why people uh, sacked for some of the, some of the very small a portion of people who were in that revolution actually believed in democracy. The people, Mubarak's folk, are Nazi commies. At least that was, that's what they were originally. They kind of moved away from the communism, but they were still Nazis. And they're national socialists. They believed in pan-Arab nationalism. At least Gamal Abdel Nasser did. And Sadat did initially, uh, you know, and then, then he found out that the the commies, the Russians, were trying to assassinate him. So he kind of tried to cozy up to the United States. And Jimmy Carter was stupid enough to to think that that cozying was for real. Hey, he likes me. I'm Jimmy Carter. I'm I'm a goober farmer from Georgia, from Plains, Georgia. And Sadat, yeah, Sadat didn't like you, Jimmy. Jimmy Carter. He was just scared of the Russians. Where can I run? Where can I hide? Any port in a storm. Even this stupid port called Jimmy Carter. Jeez. Anyway, uh, so so there are those, and then there'd be the anarchists, the commies, the Marxists, the Trotskyites, whatever. I don't know. I don't know how much of that 28% uh, support was garnered by that uh, flunky group. And then somewhere in there, there'd be people who actually believe in democracy. <laughs> if it was a third of that 28%, I'd be saying, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> I don't know. 
What's well, a third of 28? It's a little over 9, 9%, and not even 10%. I don't 5%, maybe, uh, is all the, uh, the, the, the number of people in Egypt and the electorate back then. It's probably roughly the same now. That's believed in democracy, something like liberal democracy. So, there you go, Alan Nyad. Your idea was just absolutely stupid. You weren't presenting the ideas behind this. It was just action, direct action. Let's get out there and have a revolution. Yeah, what's the idea behind it? Why, why are you uh, sacrificing your bodies and your lives and your freedom and stuff like that? Only to have an election where fundamentalists are elected. That's not a revolution. That's a devolution. You know, uh, women had a certain degree of freedom under uh, Mubarak. A certain degree of freedom to walk around without uh, uh, a certain uh, having to wear uh, too much clothing. I mean, this is a, a society where it's uh, Egypt. Uh, almost all of it's basically desert. Herodotus said it's the gift of the Nile. And that's one of the cases where Herodotus uh, wasn't mistaken. Yes, yeah, it's the gift of the Nile. It would just be pretty well flat out desert, except maybe the uh, Delta area. Flat out desert. That's why you get the mummies. It's been so dry. I mean, they, it's not just you don't get much rain. There's not even a lot of uh, moisture in the air. So dry. I, I mean, this is the southern part of Egypt. So Pete's sake. Pete's sake. Like, uh, don't have a revolution where you're just going to, you know, like uh, uh, D.H. Lawrence said, uh, wrote a poem. Let's have a revolution for fun. Well, let's not have any revolution for fun. But, uh, you know, it's like, let's have a revolution for pain. You know, like, nothing will come of it except uh, we're going to sacrifice our health and our, our lives. Yeah, that, it doesn't make any sense, you know. All you do is make a bunch of martyrs or something like that. Maybe there'll be a revolution, like the Russians had a revolution uh, in 1905, and then 12 years later they had a revolution, and it might have worked okay, except the commies were part of that, and they expropriated it. So uh, the expro expropriators expropriated the revolution. I'm kind of messing around with Marx, in case you guys haven't done it. Really. But at any rate... Uh, the uh, you know, like uh, it, it's just it, it, it was a failure. It's a miserable, masochistic failure. The Russians had their revolution 12 years after. So maybe, maybe, maybe Egypt's going to have a, a real revolution. Well, hopefully, more successful than Russia in uh, 2023. Communists that we're seeing. Mm. It's uh, these movements, you know, with. Mm. They haven't come through the industrial side of things, but they're just wanting to no. fast track it. Yeah. And really, it's a it's a corporate it, it's a corporate system that they're it, setting exactly. up with a big CEO at the top. Exactly. You know, he's a dictator, yep. and he takes power away from the people. Uh, absolutely. These movements do not ever give power to the people. No. They take power power away from them. It's way more corporate than what they replaced. Yeah. The, because it's technologized, uh, not just because it's technologized, but also because uh, of this belief system in centralization. So uh, this is what happened in China. It didn't come through an industrialized country. Same sort of thing with Russia to a large extent. Russia had started hesitating. And well, the South to, American. Oh well. Yeah. I mean, that's just a joke. Yeah, it's a joke. They're all jokes. You know, Marx, uh, Marx at, 